Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and this is Talon 2.0, Part 2. So as you guys may or may not know, I was in a one-pound battle block competition last week, and I was supposed to fight Talon. Well, I've been pretty busy this whole month and really haven't had much time to work on Talon. So at 4.30 in the afternoon, the day before the fight, and I have to fight him in the morning, I'm like, I have to build a robot. So from 4.30 in the afternoon to 2.30 in the morning, I'm out in the workshop quietly building Talon. And all through that time, I'm thinking to myself, maybe I should just call out because this is not looking good and there's no way I can get this up to the level I want it to be at in time. But luckily, I get everything together and finish it. It is not what I envisioned it to be, but it works. Well, I think it works. I haven't had time to test it. So I'm like, you know what? Even though I'm going to get my butt handed to me, I'm going to fight this because I want to see how the motors hold up. I want to see how the Lexan body holds up. That's what I really want to see. I want to see how the lifter holds up. So I fought Talon and he actually did a lot better than I thought he would. I mean, when you guys watch the footage, you're going to be all like, he did better than you thought he would? How bad did you think he could possibly be? But he held up really well. I mean, his whole body did crack and come apart. And I know you guys are like, how's that holding up well? But that's after getting hit by two different spinners countless times in a five minute fight. Talon took a lot of abuse before giving up the ghost. And he didn't even give up the ghost. Even after it exploded, I picked up the base plate. All the wheels were working. The lifter was working. Give me some scotch tape and he's good to go. So I say all that to say that the talent in this video is the rush talent that fought in the BattleBot competition, but is not the finished and complete talent 2.0. Think of this as more of the cocoon phase from the caterpillar to the butterfly. But enough talk, let's finally get started. And here is Talon. Now, if you watched the previous Talon video, you'll realize that there are two key differences between this Talon and the Talon in that video. In the previous video, we had a thick metal front plate bolted to a thin aluminum strip that was pinned at the back. Well, now we have a thick piece of PVC pipe that is glued and bolted to a strip of Lexan that is actually hinged with a door hinge at the back. The Lexan lifting arm is bent to a 90 degree angle at the end, which allows us to bolt into it. Plus, it's a lot thicker than the previous aluminum strip, which makes it more sturdy. The whole idea behind this lifter system is to be a lot more durable by almost bending with the blows and absorbing the impact. That's also why I chose PVC instead of metal, because in theory the spinners will eat into it a little bit, slowing down their own weapon. And since it is just PVC pipe, I have a whole bunch of spares, so if it gets completely destroyed in a fight, I can swap it out for a new one in no time. I've also cut out a much larger hole in the top center of the robot for the servo gear to poke out and lift up the lifter. I simply did this just to save weight. Then of course we have our four plastic pieces. The two in front help hold the blade in place in case we get hit from the side. And the two in back help us self right in case we ever get flipped over. And then the second change is instead of bending the frame, I went back to welding it together with Lexan solvent because it's a lot easier to get precision work. So now you're probably wondering, hey, why did you change the design from the first video? Well, I switched to this design for a few reasons. Primarily because they're lighter weight, seemingly more durable, and a whole lot easier to make spares. And I was completely out of time. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I built this whole robot except the very bottom of the frame and installed and wired all of the electronics just a few hours before the competition. And so as a result of that, I was unable to do hardly any testing before my fights. And as a result of that, the robot had one huge Achilles heel. Unbeknownst to me, Talon was unable to self-right from his side. It really stinks because I lost two fights because of this, and it's a super easy thing to fix. All you have to do is bolt on some UHMDF to the sides or angle the blade or something, and you're good to go. I was trying to do that in between fights, but I ran out of time. Enough sad talk, though. Let's move on to the electronic guts of Talon. So first off, we have our Ultra Torque High Tech Lifting Servo with a little custom arm on there. And I'm going to mount this to the middle side of the robot. Next, I'm going to take four 600 RPM 12 volt geared motors that I've attached little Lego wheels to and mount them at each corner of the robot. Just like that. And the motors are being held in place by these little tiny white brackets that are crazy cheap. You can get like 50 of them for half a sneeze. I also wired the motors from each side together and hooked up this little connector to each set. 
So now I'm going to take my two speed controllers that share a battery cable and plug in each one into one of the motor connectors we just spoke of. After that, we can plug our speed controllers and lifting servo into our receiver and tuck everything away behind the drive motors. There we go, and I dropped in a little bit of hot glue to help keep the wires out of the way. Now I'm going to put in our battery, slip the battery cable and the battery receiver cable through these two small holes I have in the roof, then bolt it down. Now whenever you're ready, all you have to do is plug in the battery and turn on the transmitter. Speaking of transmitter, I'm using the FlySky FS16 transmitter with its corresponding receiver. The transmitter and receiver together cost no more than 50 bucks and I'm absolutely loving them. Although I have not had them for too long, I'm very confident in saying you cannot get anything better for the price because they are amazing. Back to the robot. With 600 RPM drive motors, the robot's pretty quick. I mean, it could certainly be a little faster with larger wheels, but it's nothing to scoff at as it is. It also has a decent amount of torque. I mean, you're not going to be able to outpush anyone in a head-to-head -head competition, but if you hit him from the side, you might be able to do something. My original plan was to order four 450 or 500 RPM motors for more torque, but since it took forever for them to get here, I chose 600 instead. As for the lifter motor and lifter design itself, it has more than enough power and is also pretty quick. I can definitely see myself upgrading the drive motors, but not the lifting servo. I love that little monster. Even though it was a rushed build, all things being considered, I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. There are definitely some things I wanted to do to the bot, but didn't have time to, and I paid for that dearly. But looking at the whole picture, I'm quite pleased. And there you have it, part two of three for Talon, the one pound robot. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord going, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.